In the weather today, we're heading into an active spring severe weather pattern. Sunday could see classic dry line and supercell action on the Great Plains. The world's hot spot once again in the Southern Hemisphere. In the Kalahari Desert, fuels drift on the Namibian border, 113 degrees. At the other extreme, the coldest place on Earth, permanently inhabited, is Kerbo, Russia, near Tunguska, minus 41 degrees. And of course, in the past we have pointed out Kerbo sounds very much like a video game. Unfortunately, this is not a gaming channel, so we'll press on and look at the surface analysis. Got a couple of areas of concern. One is this storm system in the southeastern U.S. That will be moving into the northeast corridor for Saturday. And another strong Pacific system coming into California. And that will dump quite a bit of snow in the Sierra Nevadas and have an impact on Southern California and Arizona as well. The upper level charts, 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, showing a complex split flow pattern with a well-developed Hudson Bay vortex and a series of cutoff flows embedded in the southern stream. Got a 160-knot jet approaching the Southern California coast that appears to be paired up with the subtropical jet as well. The polar front jet, the northern branch up there in the northern states, and the southern branch running about like that. Where is the moisture? Well, that's very important for this time of year. We've got one and a half to two inches of precipitable water in southern Florida. A flood watch in effect for southern Florida through Saturday night due to two to four inches of rain being expected. And on the west coast, atmospheric river coming into northern California, precipitable water about half an inch to one inch, IVT values about 300 to 400. And that river of moisture will be working south along the Sierra Nevadas and make its way into Southern California tomorrow. So we'll take you straight out there into the Pacific and let you get a look at what's going on. That's the system making its way into California. 997 millibar low offshore. That's going to be the occlusion. The active triple point area appears to be in Oregon right now, and that should regenerate somewhere in Southern California tomorrow. And then we'll see that traverse the Rockies towards Texas and the Four Corners for Sunday. Further out in the Pacific, you can see a line of storm systems, and we are gonna have quite an active weather pattern over the next five days. Series of systems making its way into the Northwestern US and California, and ultimately into the US itself. Let's take a look at the weather starting with the northeastern U.S. Here we see a frontal system. This is a small compact weather system. Here we have the zone of warm air advection, the overrunning. That's going to be north of a warm front, which is somewhere right in that area. And then as we go further to the west, we get closer to the cold front and we get more of a sharper zone of forcing some convection in there, and they do have a winter storm warning for the Rockford area for this afternoon. Waukegan and Milwaukee under a winter weather advisory expecting up to one inch of snow this afternoon. Most of lower Michigan around Grand Rapids, Lansing and Flint under a winter weather advisory until tonight for one to three inches of snow. We switch over to the infrared imagery and there we see a baroclinic leaf. That's a good indicator of frontal lift. And as this continues to the east, we're going to be seeing winter weather advisories, winter warnings for much of upstate New York, New England into Maine. And it looks like the rain snow line will be somewhere right in here. And we do have a flood watch for the entire northeast corridor from Washington, D.C. to Boston, looking for two to four inches of rain. Here's the official snowfall forecast through the weekend from the National Digital Forecast Database, looking for some pretty high amounts in far northern New York, approaching two feet in some parts of Vermont and New Hampshire, and high amounts all the way up to Holton and Caribou. 
In the southeastern U.S., some very impressive signatures on water vapor imagery. Very strong vortices in northeast Texas, in Mississippi. These are all part of the occlusion on the backside of the weather system, the main area of bare clinicity well out to the east. Cold core convection has broken out through much of east Texas. These cells rather shallow moving north to south and more convection further to the east in Louisiana. Some of the stronger cells are going to be wherever there is access to surface heating. So maybe in here, you're going to get some of the stronger convection. Further to the south, though, some deep convection. And that's going to be in southern Florida, where they do have an SPC slight risk in effect. The strongest cells are well to the south around Havana in Cuba. Those are some powerful storms there. Let's take a look at the radar. Yeah, that's Cuba right there from the Key West radar, a cell about 20 miles southwest of Havana. This may have supercellular structure. It's pretty far from the radar. The tops on that up to about 45,000 feet. And a few other strong cells south of Miami. Those are out there along the barrier islands, and those may be heading out into the Atlantic. In the southern plains, cold core convection from Dallas eastward that's associated with steep lapse rates in the lower and mid troposphere. The air mass is rather dry, but the lapse rates are quite steep with that pool of cold air in the mid and upper levels. Elsewhere, no real problems, but we do have a high wind watch posted for Sunday in West Texas and in eastern New Mexico as well. Winds could be up to 60 miles an hour later in the weekend. In the Northern Plains, high wind watch for Sunday, Dodge City, Pratt to Hayes and Wakini. And as we go north, winter storm watch for the Dakotas, Saturday night and Sunday, and further east into Minnesota into Monday and Tuesday. Could be about 10 inches of snow throughout the high plains, going up to 24 to 25 inches in parts of eastern Minnesota. So definitely check those forecasts if you're going to be on the road in the Northern Plains. There's the official snowfall totals over the weekend through Monday morning. You can see about 6 to 10 inches across Montana in the Dakotas from Bismarck to Pierre down to Yankton, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches. And then the higher amounts are found near Minneapolis, north of the city, about 15 inches and then trailing off to 11 to 5 inches as you go south. A very nice day across the southwestern U.S., but it is the calm before the storm. At this time, mostly looking at wind advisories, those have been posted, as mentioned, across the high plains of Texas and New Mexico, and we've also got wind advisories in the Mojave Desert. That's going to be for Saturday, winds gusting up to 55 miles an hour, and those could continue into Sunday. And of course, as we go west, let's head out towards the Pacific. And there we pick up that front coming into the northern California coast, approaching the Bay Area. And that's associated with an atmospheric river, IVTs 300 to 400. Another winter storm warning for the Sierras for this afternoon through Sunday, expecting two to three feet in the highest elevations. The snow line will be at about 4,000 feet. The eastern slopes, including Lake Tahoe, will be under a winter weather advisory. Tahoe expecting 3 to 8 inches with 7 to 14 inches above 7,000. The Mount Shasta area will be getting snow as well. And for the northwestern U.S., closed low off of Oregon. That's going to be the center of the occlusion, very similar to what we have in Texas today. That closed low will persist through tomorrow before opening up and weakening as it moves into California. A quick check of Canada showing that cold axis, that's that surge of cold air moving southward into the U.S. itself. Alaska rather quiet, although the west coast still enduring a series of winter storms. Blizzard warning in effect in the southwestern Brooks Range, but that's about it. The eastern part of Alaska looking pretty good on this Friday afternoon. And there's a glimpse out into the Atlantic. Strong cold front pushing into Germany and France. 
leading edge running from about Berlin to south of Paris. Warm sector down across the Mediterranean and the Czech Republic. And not much to say aside from that. So let's head on back to the U.S. So with this highly dynamic weather pattern, we just need to go ahead and jump into the maps and see what's going on. There's our major weather system there in the southeastern U.S. You're going to see that track up into the northeast coast region and behind it, cold air pushing south. So we go into the overnight hours and into tomorrow, large precipitation shield from Virginia all the way up to the New York City area. And that continues advancing north with snow on the northern periphery. And we saw those higher amounts up there from northern New York into Maine. In the center of the system, midday tomorrow around Baltimore and then shifting up into Long Island during the evening. And we almost missed that system there in California, so let's roll that back. Okay, so that's going to be midnight. A lot of precipitation affecting the northern Sierras, the Sacramento-Stockton, San Francisco area, although San Francisco appears to be clearing out. And then by tomorrow morning, moving on down into southern California, a little bit of edge taken off of that frontal system by Saturday, but... This slog of moisture right here continuing to impact the Oregon coast close to that occlusion. And then this thing is going to be crossing the Rockies during the day on Saturday. And then Sunday, that's going to be the day to watch. So Sunday morning, you can see the dry line starting to get established right there. The main cold front, very hard to find, but I went ahead and placed that around Albuquerque to El Paso. So strong cold air advection in the mid and upper levels. Warm advection in the lower levels, bringing that moisture north. So, of course, that means powder keg coming together for Sunday. So, midday, there we are. Dry line setting up from about Goodland all the way down to Childress and down to San Angelo. And strong cold air advection right there. You can see 40 knots sustained at uh, yeah, Guadalupe Peak. They could be gusting well above 60 to 70 knots on Sunday. So we're going to be watching this area very carefully. Good storm potential further north, but uh, looks like some very strong dynamics kind of plowing into this area. So the more questionable area of interest, I think that's going to be closer to I-40. That'll have to be watched. Okay, so by afternoon, there we go. Dry line activity all the way from Nebraska down the dry line. And probably some of the tornado potential could be further north. This backed flow right here near the triple point, that's kind of a classic area for tornado genesis. So, yeah, there could be some potential up there north of Russell and Hayes. But the more surefire convection, that's going to be further down the dry line where we have the stronger dynamics, lots of cap removal, and closer access to moisture coming up from the Gulf. So it will be a very interesting day. And very likely I'm going to move that Monday supporter stream that supporter video. I don't know if we're going to go live or not, but whatever. We're going to be doing the show probably on Sunday unless I have a conflict on my plans. So we'll kind of see what happens there. Anyway, going into Sunday night, convection moving up into the Kansas City area. Other convection down the dry line, a little bit more uncertain. Doesn't look like an MCS coming together here. Well, actually, yeah. Overnight, I don't know if that's a continuation of convection from overnight or if that's a regeneration, one of the two, but it does look wet in Texas up into the Ozarks. So that's going to be Monday. Strong Midwest system, snow developing up there in Minnesota. Forgot to cover that too. Yeah, let's back that up. Yep, yeah, see there, snowstorm. That's the one we were talking about earlier. So much weather going on. Good grief. Okay, so Tuesday. Storm chances in the southeastern U.S. This could be a severe weather day. You can see that triple point there near Birmingham, midday Tuesday. So this is going to have to be watched very closely. This is that time of year where they get those big cells going up in the Gulf Coast region. And there have been some very notable tornado outbreaks in late March and early April, for sure. Weak little system coming into Mexico. That's kind of falling apart, and we're going to see this next one. This looks a little bit better in the western U.S. Meanwhile, out to the east, 
our old system moving into the northeastern U.S., redevelopment along the tail end. And Thursday and Friday, things getting active out west, another atmospheric river and strong Pacific system moving into California Friday and Saturday, a Midwest system. There's just stuff all over the map. So we're just going to revisit this next week. We're already at 204 hours. This is probably subject to change, but looks like potential for another dry line day coming up for March 31st, April 1st. We'll have to see about that. Okay, so that is the show. And when we come back on Sunday or Monday, we're going to be doing some high resolution model graphics like this. So if you want to see that, you need to be a Patreon supporter, help support the program. And otherwise, we'll be back on Wednesday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you back here again next week. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.